Hearthstone, and today I am going to be playing an arena, and I think I'm actually going to go with Rexar. I've done these two pretty recently. Um, unfortunately, he does kind of suck, but at least Unleash the Hounds is pretty good these days. I think Savannah High Main is significantly better than Sunwalker. It's an interesting debate because Sunwalker is a kind of card that stabilizes you, and uh, if you were losing, then it can help you get back into a game, but Savannah High Main is more of one that just puts it completely out of reach, and it doesn't usually do too much on defense. Misdirection isn't really a consideration, but either way, we'll go with Savannah High Main. Venture Co. is a pretty good pickup here. I like to get twos early, but um, neither of these two are remotely as powerful as Venture Co. Uh, okay, well, well, these kind of all suck. You can get some spell damage in, uh, in Hunter, but I don't think it's worth taking Hunter's Mark. Even though, I mean, it's a good way of losing value, but still getting rid of bigger creatures. And I don't think, I don't think I want Freezing Trap. I'm going to go with the Mage. He's not very good, but he's also not very bad. So I can either take this card, which is um, occasionally a 6-5 for 4, or I can take the consistent 4-5, and I think I'm going to take the Chill and Yeti, just because it's just so consistently powerful, and it, it never really lets you down. So Direwolf Alpha or Frostwolf Warlord is pretty close here. Raid Leader is a little bit less powerful, I think. Um, so I don't have any 2 drops. I'm only 5 cards in, so that's not such a big deal. But this guy's also a beast, and while I'm not going to focus on beast, I'm still going to take, like, kill commands and stuff like that. So I think that it's probably okay to take. Um, at the same time, Frostwolf Warlord is probably going to be a little bit consistently better. But I think I'm going to take this because just because it's a 2-drop and it's a beast. Um, so there's potential there. Um, Explosive Trap or Deadly Shot? I'm not really sure which of these is the better hunter card. I think I'm going to go with Explosive Trap because I, I'll be happy to pick up as many of these as possible, whereas I only want a couple of deadly shots. Um, if you pick up like three or four of these, then they just don't work for whatever reason. I've, I've tried it multiple times and it's just not successful. Uh, here is a tough choice. I'm not a huge fan of the Dragonling mechanic, but I'm not a huge fan of any of these cards. So I can either take Bluegill Warrior as just like a, a little two damage spell or dragonling mechanic. I think I'm going to take the mechanic. It has a little bit more potential um, even though it's not really as good. Or it's, even though it's not really very good. Alright, so I can either take a tracking or a jungle panther. I think we're going to go with the panther. It's not a great card, but it's also not terrible. You can often trade up. And it is a beast, so if we get any kill commands, then that'll be nice. Uh, these three cards are actually all pretty good. I'm going to take Unleash the Hounds, I think. I don't know, maybe I'm overestimating it, but I think that this card is actually pretty good now. Alright, Kodo is an easy pick. I like it better than Master Swordsmith and Crazed Alchemist. It has a much better effect and a, like, a reasonable sized body for, for a 5 drop. And uh, it's also Beast, so <laughs> can't really go wrong with that. Freezing Trap is not really one I'm looking to pick up. Lord of the Arena is an okay card, but I think I'd much rather end up with a Silver Moon Guardian. Scavenging Hyena or Silverhand Knight. Silverhand Knight just has the consistency factor. This card is obviously a very good combo with Unleash the Hounds, but I'd rather take the more consistently powerful card. So Random Animal Companion is just one of the best things. I think it would probably beat Dark Iron Dwarf pre-nerf, but post-nerf, I think for sure. I'd rather go for an Animal Companion here. And I can take either a Tracking Mad or a Mad Bomber. Priestess of a Loon is not really in the conversation. It's a little bit too expensive for my taste. So between these two, I think I'm going to go with Mad Bomber just because I don't have really any 2-drops. I have this one Direwolf Alpha, but I have no 2-drop 3-2s yet, so definitely want to pick something like that up. So Spellbreaker, Frostwolf Warlord, or Fen Creeper. Um, I already have a couple of 5s, not an absurd amount that I can't take any more 5s, but not an incredible amount that I... or but not too few that I need to be picking them up. And I think Spellbreaker is a better card than either of these two just the ability to silence a minion and deal with a bigger threat that you wouldn't otherwise be able to deal with. T taking taunters also has some merit, considering I don't have any yet, but you don't really need taunters to win games with Hearthstone. I think Stormwind is significantly better than Frostwolf Warlord, 
no matter I mean when whenever you play this thing it just has an immediate impact so even if they can kill it or deal with it or silence it then it still is pretty good and it is a 6 6 so that's always going to be relevant frost wolf is also very good though I think that it's a, a an above average card all right so I can either take acolyte of pain for the draw or tracking for the filtering I think at this point especially with how few two drops I have I want to take the tracking so if I can do it on turn one then maybe I can go find a two drop or something like that so I'll go with tracking I said that I didn't want too many deadly shots but I definitely want to pick up one or two and I'm not missing out on too much three three taunt is fine two two that has relevant upside is also fine but I'd rather go with a deadly shot here Youthful Brewmaster is going to be a very easy pick. Wisp is not good. Um, Murloc Tidehunter is also just not great. And it's a two drop. And I don't really have much to pick up. I mean, I've got Spellbreaker, Silverhand Knight, Kodo, um, I guess Jungle Panther, Mad Bomber. Uh, but still, I think I said Dragonlin Mechanic. And Silver Moon Guardian, even. I don't know. There's, there's a couple things that I can do. Ooh. Got. Legendary. So I think it's still Sylvanas Windrunner, even though it's six mana. Illidan Stormrage can be very good, but this thing is just consistent, and uh, it's only two less power, whereas its ability is is pretty comparable, I think. And Gruul is just a little bit too expensive for my taste, but that's nice. Got another Unleash the Hounds, better than either of these two. This guy without. I mean, I think the only time you can play it is when you're in Rogue or when you're in Warrior, where you have like six weapons or something like that. And Murloc Tidehunter I've already spoken about, I'm not a huge fan of. But that means that we've got two Unleash the Hounds, three Unleash the Hounds. Um, so if I do find another Scavenging Hyena or any Starving Buzzards in the last seven of these picks, I'm definitely going to take it. Lord of the Arena, Murloc Raider, not really the things I'm looking for. Animal Companion is very good though. And we can either take a Tracking or Bloodfin Raptor. I still need two drops. Even though it looks like I have a ton, a lot of them are Unleash the Hounds, and that's not really a two-drop, so I'm going to take Bloodfin Raptor. Um, this one's really close again. It's Explosive Trap or Deadly Shot, but we also have Cult Master, and that combos really well with Unleash the Hounds. So uh, I could definitely take any of these cards and be happy with it. I already have one of each of these. I think I'm going to take something to um, make three of the cards that are in my deck a lot more powerful. All right. Take another Silverhand Knight, again, consistently powerful. Wisp is not very powerful, and Jungle Panther's okay, but I'd rather go with that. And we got a, we got a Deadly Shot, that's nice. These two, Ancient Brewmaster is fine, Freezing Trap is not. <laughs> but second Deadly Shot I'm happy to pick up. Alright, so it's going to either be Raging Organ or River Crocolisk. I'm just going to have to look at my curve a little bit. So in terms of three drops to play, I have one, two-ish. 3, 4, and in terms of 2 drops I have 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 of each, and I think 2 drops are a little bit more important, but Raging Organ is a little bit better. I don't really have anything to take advantage of this, so I think I'm just going to go with River Crocolisk. And um, I think another Animal Companion is good, especially I get that 3 drop. Unfortunately I didn't pick up any Starving Buzzards. I didn't see any. Um, there were a couple of Hyenas that I could have gotten, but either way, I still think Unleash the Hounds is an okay card. And uh, that's why I ended up taking it. And then last pick, we get the choice between Savannah Highmane and Sunwalker again. Uh, I think this time I'm actually going to take the Sunwalker. And there's nothing really to take advantage of Highmane, and just at least having one card that can help me get back from behind. This deck does not have much removal. There's no multi shots. There's no explosive shots. So I think this is this deck overall is pretty bad. But um, we'll find out. I mean, it's really just how good is Unleash the Hounds. And I, I've been playing it in the aggro hunter deck on ranked, but that deck is so much different than anything that you'll find in the arena, so it's going to be a lot harder to uh, compare. It's pretty difficult to compare them, is what I'm trying to say. But it definitely has potential. I mean, just the fact that it costs two mana and the beasts stick around is really nice. Uh, I think I ended up with three animal companions, and when you get the 2-4, I think it's Leoc, then that's very good because it gives them all plus 1, plus 0, oh, and then that means that they can actually trade with pretty much everything that your opponent's trying to do. Alright, there's... None of these cards are really anything that I want to see in my opening hand, <laughs> including Sylvanas, so I'm just going to mulligan all of them. Uh, Unleash the Hounds maybe should be kept, but since I have three of them, there's a good chance I'll draw one. 
just in, in case I do get, um, I do fall behind in the game and it can help me get back up. So when I take a quick look at this hand, it sort of looks like I want to just coin something out. And now that he played a leper gnome, I think I do want to coin out a river crocolisk, but, oh, and drawing the jungle panther is also very good. But what I was going to say is that it looks like a hand where you would want to coin out a two drop, but then you would go turn one river cockless, turn two direwolf alpha, and then turn three you wouldn't have a play because you'd have these two four drops in hand and you'd have to rely on steady shot, which is just not very good. Like Alright, so novice engineer, and uh, this is actually a pretty interesting card now, novice engineer. It basically became, um, ooh, mad bomber. That's a little bit of a risky play, but I think I'm actually just going to go for it. If I hit Lepernome, then that's very good for me. Alright, nothing actually happened. <laughs> um, Alright, so basically since they nerfed Novice Engineer to a 1-1, one, one, it became identical to a, um, a Reinforce, since when you play Novice Engineer, you're playing a 1-1, one, one, which is the same as a Paladin creature, for... Uh, for two mana and you're not losing out on card advantage because you get to draw a card. So the only difference is that you get to cycle through one more card, which is kind of interesting I thought. I'm just gonna go ahead and kill this thing. Um, there's the risk that he just ends up reinforcing here and then um, I'm gonna and not attacking with this and then I'm basically just gonna lose the Mad Bomber and that's probably the play that he should make. But yeah, so maybe, well I don't know. Other than that, I could have just attacked him, and then he could have done the same thing, and all I would have done was I get extra get extra damage through. If he attacks me there, then that's just seems very bad unless he's going to play a consecration this turn. And if he trades there, then I'm pretty happy. All right, mad bomber. Oh, that's really unfortunate. <laughs> that does happen occasionally, but. The fact that his Mad Bomber was incredible could end up being the determining factor of this game, but I'm definitely definitely not out of it yet. Uh, Blessing of Kings would put me incredibly far behind to a point where it might I might not be able to come back. But I mean, I have solid plays for the rest of the game, even just without drawing cards. I mean, I can play this next turn and then these two the turn after and follow, follow it up with the Stormwind. So I've got a lot of powerful things to do. Just a, a Chillwind Yeti of his own is okay, but not, not anything incredible. Blessing of Might. Oh, Hand of Protection. Okay, well that's pretty good. And he's just going to attack me, so I'm going to kill the Mad Bomber here. Could Brewmaster it back, but I don't have another good play. So I'm just going to do that and play this guy, and then pass the turn. There's not really much I can do about this Hand of Protection. Again, I don't have too much removal in the way of... Uh, I don't have too much spot removal, I mean. So it's pretty difficult for me to combat this kind of situation. It doesn't really matter which one he kills with the sword and which one he kills with that. But True Silver Champion is another card that's really bad for me, so first thing to go wrong was him to get the free kill on the Jungle Panther, and then the second thing was him playing a really powerful card in True Silver. He ended up getting a one-for-one one off the Hand of Protection and uh, some uh, a pretty big tempo swing, but he didn't really get any true value out of it. Alright, so we lose a a, probably a little bit too much just by tracking here because I want to play a 4 drop and a 2 drop but what would be a really good draw here I guess unleash the hounds yeah and I have three of them in the deck to take out the uh, yeti alright well I could just go for another silver hand knight that's fine and I'll, I'll go ahead and, and kill one of these maybe I should have just attacked it into the chillwind yeti that probably was correct but now that I think about it, I do have a Direwolf Alpha and a Stormwind for my Unleash the Hounds, which is kind of sweet. Uh, that's an another very good card. Just have him having a 5-6 a is really scary for me. Yeah, so if I had attacked my 2-2 into that, then I could have just traded this 2-2, which would have been pretty good. So if I play Unleash the Hounds... Then I can play the Direwolf Alpha in between and take out the 5-6. Alternatively, I think I'm just going to go ahead and play this. And 
right now he doesn't have a good way on board of taking this out <clears throat> and if he doesn't take it out this turn then he could be in pretty bad shape because I could again do Unleash the Hounds plus Direwolf Alpha to make all my wolves 3 power which would be very very sweet and I'd probably be able to clear his board but I mean all he has to do is have any spell that deals damage or affects the power of one of his creatures well, that's also not terrible for him. Oh god. <laughs> Alright, so she's going to trade a couple Divine Shields, but this is fine. Um, we can actually come back from this fairly well. Unfortunately, he did kill that. But, um, alright, so... I think it's going to start with un Unleash the Hounds. And I'm going to be able to play this direwolf alpha right in the middle and kill that guy and then we're just gonna take out the five six as well and then finish the turn off with this thing alright so yeah again we're not too far behind anymore um, on cards, he's got he's up one. He has a slightly better board. Actually, no, I have a slightly better board now that I look at it. But it's his turn to attack, which puts him at an advantage. But yeah, I mean, Unleash the Hounds plus Direwolf Alpha right there was a very strong combo. Basically, now that I think about it, Direwolf Alpha is kind of like a better Timberwolf in these kind of situations. Because most of the time, you are just going to be suiciding your, your, uh, your puppies. And the ability to do so if you do it correctly is is pretty nice so he's got a 7-6 there wow okay he's just making that trade cuz he no he doesn't he's just going for my face now that makes sense i mean he has me dead on board um to the 7-6 plus that thankfully top decked good old sunwalker Alright, so now I have a couple of choices. I could either play the Youthful Brewmaster, bring back the Silvermoon Guardian, or just Steady Shot here. Um, bringing back the Silvermoon Guardian is probably going to be a little bit too slow, so I think I'm just going to go for a Steady Shot. And besides, I can um, Spellbreaker something, not this, um, but I can Spellbreaker something and then change a minion's attack to one. Alright, well that's fine. So I still have the Brewmaster so I can um, bring this guy back up. Oh no, he's just going to kill it right now. There's no reason for him not to just take this out. Alright, so now I need to, uh, need to draw something. Well, that that wasn't it. Um, Alright, oh, well, I'm not dead. Dead. Just pretty close to it. Yeah, that was a very good humility. <laughs> um, I guess this guy? I don't really know. He's got two cards in hand. If any of them can do any damage, then I'm dead. Plus, I'm dead to any weapon or Avenging Wrath or Consecration. There you go. Uh, Stormwind Champion. So that was a good game. My opponent had a lot of good cards. I think his, his deck was okay. He also was playing some bad cards, but um, so am I. So I couldn't really take advantage of it. Almost came back with that Unleash the Hounds, but basically he just did so many powerful things one right after another that I couldn't really come back from it. But, yeah, that's okay. Um, one loss isn't going to ruin an arena. Often enough, you just go on streaks. The fact that I got a f the first loss before, like, seven wins is disappointing, and it, prob it probably means I won't go for 12, but I don't think I was going to with this deck anyway. Basically what I'm trying to say is that you usually, since you get matched up against better players, the further you, ooh, I have two two drops, that's nice, um, and a three drop, wow. Since you usually get matched up against better people the further you go along in the draft, um, if you lose before like five or seven or whatever, then your chances of winning against more and more better decks is hard, so you usually have to just hope that you get paired up against bad players and we're making bad decks for your first two or three games.
but either way, we have a very, very good hand here. Um, probably just going to go with the River Crocolisk. Not too much risk. Fortunately, I'm on the draw against a rogue, so it's not like if I did play the Bloodfin Raptor, he could just coin into a uh, uh, SI7 agent and take my guy out. But anyway, wow. Just <laughs> very good curve here. It doesn't mean that we're going to win this game. My opponent can do very powerful things, whereas I'm just doing very average things. So definitely can still lose, but I mean the the ability to play the cards on one turns one two three four five and six that are all have effects is pretty good. But yeah, he's gonna be able to regain control of the board here because of that backstab. Unless he doesn't, yeah, if he doesn't have anything, <laughs> that sucks for him. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go for an animal companion here, and uh, I guess probably hoping for Leoc just because he has the most power and toughness. Getting an alternate. There we go. Or not Liak, this is um, Misha. Um, getting an alternate 4 drop to play is nice because I might not want to play the Cult Master this turn. But yeah, I mean, this guy has a relevant ability and he has the most power and toughness, so he's not always the best, but often the best. Alright, so that's fine. I mean, he's just going to basically trade one for one. And I got a Chill Wind Yeti as well. That's nice. <laughs> I mean, I still have Silver Hand Knight into Sylvanas Windrunner, so. Definitely looking like a solid game here. It's not like my opponent has anything like uh, Flame Strike to just completely take control of the board again. So, I mean, there's Blade Flurry. I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> I don't know what that could be. Faceless Manipulator. Sure. Okay, that's pretty good for him. Because I don't have a solid way of dealing one damage right here. So I guess I'll go with the Silver Hand Knight and just attack him. And if. Um. I should have played that on the left so that if it's a betrayal, then it'll just be the 2 2 that's in the middle so he can only kill my 2 2 really. With that Sea Giant. Oh god. That's not good. Alright. All right. Oh, sweet draw. So um, this turn is going to be very good now. I can go with a cult master. Oh god, that was a mistake. I meant to have enough mana to deadly shot still. Whoops. That was such a dumb mistake. I was just playing so fast because I thought I had a really good play. But um, what I should have just done was not drawn the card and not played the cult master. Just played the uh, the deadly shot instead. Looks like I'll still be all right. Oh, well, now I guess I just kind of have to hope that I hit it. Unleash the Hounds. All right, well, not the greatest Unleash the Hounds ever, but uh, it'll suffice. Like, even at that card's worst, it just traded for a two-drop, so <laughs> that's fine. I don't know. If I hadn't made that mistake, I'd probably be winning by a lot more, but I'm still up, I guess, a card, but he has control of the board, but I am, I do have 15 life on him. Well, if he keeps playing uh, Frostwolf Grunts, then that's okay. Okay, that's that's a good one here. So I'm going to be at 8 mana, so I can, I can do 2 4 drops. It's probably better than doing a 6 plus a hero ability, because my hero ability is not very good. Um, the 4 drops aren't so good either. Alright, this seems better. I have a couple of other 6 drops that I could have done, but, I mean, hero ability's not bad here. He is down to 12, so he can't really, like, use his dagger aggressively anymore, and Sunwalker completely walls this board, plus my opponent's already dropped an Assassinate, but looks like he's got another one. <laughs> um, and this is now officially very, very scary for me. I need, I guess, like, an Unleash the Hounds, I don't know. Venture Crow. Alright, well, I'll probably do that here. Um, actually, maybe not. Yeah, I think I have to. It's alright. Uh, hopefully it'll die so that I can play a 6-drop and a 4-drop this turn, but I don't think it will. I'm still at 21, and he only has 8 power on board, so I'm not in, like, huge danger of dying here, but, yeah, it's pretty good for me, because it does... Oh, God, he's got another one. Yeah, I, I need to draw... Oh no. 
Well, he can't really hit my creature. Oh, he's hitting my creatures. <laughs> And he's just going for my face. Uh, he just didn't attack with that for some reason. Um, all right, so we can do that, obviously. And I think just play Sylvanas. They do very similar things here. I mean, I could play like a youthful brewmaster, pick this guy up, and a dragonling mechanic, but I think that's worse. Am I dead? Well, yeah, I'm just dead. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Oh, no. No, okay, I'm not dead. Down to two. Oh, wow. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. So now if I draw and unleash the hounds, he's just dead. Come on, top deck. No! It does nothing. Alright, what can I do? I don't think I have any plays here. <sighs> I just could not gain enough traction to get back into this game. I don't think that there's anything here that does anything. I can't suicide this to take care of a couple of creatures. I can only hit him down to two with my hero ability. There's no way I can activate it again. This doesn't add any power. Nothing has taunt. We're dead. Well, we'll play it out just because our opponent has been making some crazy mistakes. But, um... Does not look like we're going to be able to get there here. <laughs> I guess I should have attacked this in case he accidentally misclicked and like attacked my Savannah High Main or something. But that's disappointing, um, especially since my opponent screwed up two times there at the end. And I was up by so much in the middle. And he just played a couple of Defias Ringleaders, and uh, I couldn't do anything about it. So 0-2, <laughs> oh this is uh, definitely the worst I've ever started. And I don't think that this deck is so bad. I think it's actually pretty decent. It doesn't have too much removal, but it's got like some spells. I mean, it's got Explosive Trap, a couple of Deadly Shots. Um, it doesn't have too much to like alter combat to allow me to um, regain control of the board. But I do have Unleash the Hounds, which sort of help that. Alright, so I'm just going to toss this Silverhand Knight and uh, tracking turn one to try and fill out my curve. So now I have a three drop, so I can go for a four drop. Or something like that. Mm, yeah. Delarian Mage is so bad. I picked it up early hoping that it would get some multi shots and stuff, but I just didn't. So I could take Chill and Yeti for the curve, or I could take a deadly shot um, just as some removal. Uh, it's a pretty tough choice, but I think I'm going to go with Chill and Yeti, especially since Priest doesn't really have removal to deal with this until Holy Fire on 6. And I have a nice curve coming up, so um, I should be. Oh, please be a Northshire Cleric. I guess if he has Power Word Shield, then that would end up not being so good for me, but he's not going to do anything. But it did sort of seem like he has a 1-drop, and the only dedicated 1-drop that he can play on turn 1, I mean, I guess he could play Holy Smite on me, but is uh, is a Northshire Cleric. So it's a fair assumption that he's got a Northshire Cleric, even if he doesn't have one. And it's going to be really difficult to play around that, but sure, he's going to drop a Swamp Ooze here. That's fine with me. Um, I'm going to go with an animal companion first just to see what random it's I get and it's just that guy so um, it's not worth trying to get in some extra damage here at the beginning just because I think I have I can take good control of the board so it's probably just not going to benefit me too much but I think that this is the worst one that I could have gotten in this situation and again I do have unleashed the hound so if I ever get that combo off that'll be nice Alright, that'll, uh, that'll work, I guess. Oh, he does have a Light Warden here. Interesting. So I could go with and Unleash the Hounds here, and I think I shall. I can take out these two, kill that, still have a really good board, and, uh, 
yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about this right now. He could, like, Holy Nova me in a couple of turns, but it's good to get the Light Warden off the board. Um, so early, oh god, that could be really scary. I have a lot of good creatures in this deck. Alright, Jungle Panther is fine. It's not great, but it's fine. It's too bad that I can't play this next turn. Ooh, he's got another one drop, which is Holy Smite. Power Word Shield. Alright, that makes it a little scarier. Come on, Misha. Alright, Huffer's not bad here. Hitting him for a lot of damage right now. Although, we're very weak to uh, a Holy Nova, but, I mean, that's the risk you take with uh, Animal Companion. But either way, Animal Companion is a very good card. All of the three drops are are powerful. I mean, even this guy being a 2-4 is not a bad, is not a bad. and uh, the fact that you get the Hounds is, is really, really good. Alright, so that could be bad. Please don't... Ugh, killed one of my guys. Alright, that's fine. Not very good, though. I mean, that's really bad. <laughs> hmm. Alright, so I think I'm just going to drop Savannah High Main. Um, and then make this trade here. Yeah, if, if he hadn't been able to kill one of them, then I could have just traded off for that guy. But as it stands, I think I'm just going to... I'm just going to attack him. Knife Juggler was a good one, and I mean, if he had hit anything else other than, so he had, so three of the choices that he could have hit, so 60% of them would have been good for me, and 40% would have been bad, so that's not, like, absurd. Alright, so he's got, oh god, um, that's pretty good, he can, I mean, it's not good, but it's fine, and he still has to deal with these two hyenas, though. And if he just attacks me... I'm just going to trade one of them off and then attack him in the face here. Um, and as for plays, I guess just this guy and this thing, just because it's significantly better than that. Alright. I mean, I had I had bad chances, so one, uh, one two, three, sixty percent of the targets were mine, but each of them hit me, so whatever. It makes it really bad because he, he now has a pretty good trade here, but I mean, he's getting close to dying, so that is pretty nice. I'm up on cards. This is a really dangerous game because if I lose it, then I go 0 3, which I have not yet done. <laughs> but presumably, I'm playing against other people who have bad decks. The Iron Mage, Oasis Snapjaw, is definitely, uh, <laughs> definitely lending some truth to that uh, thought. We're going to go ahead and kill that thing just in case he does have a Holy Nova or something. Play a Sunwalker and still still be able to ping, so I have lethal for next turn even if he heals. So one of the cards in his hand has to be relevant, basically. I think this will be the last one for this video, but hopefully afterwards I can go ahead and win some games, because I still think that this deck can get to at least five wins. It's really one of the stronger beast decks that I've I've played, and I don't know, I think it's good, but for whatever reason, I lost the first two games. Uh, the first one, sure, it makes sense, my opponent was pretty good. The second one, uh, <laughs> my opponent kept making mistakes, and yet... Still, I guess he played the important turns correctly, and then the ones where he was already so far ahead, he misplayed slightly, giving me an extra turn, and I was almost able to do something about it. I needed to top deck um, one of two cards, maybe, I guess, one of three cards, because I hadn't played, I haven't played an explosive trap yet. Um, but yeah. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this video, and have a nice day. Bye.